You're most likely watching this video because you're considering a gemstone for your engagement ring. Everybody talks about sapphires, rubies, emeralds, but what about morganite? What about the beautiful peach stone that can be set in your ring? Today, we're gonna talk all about it. Today, we're gonna discuss everything you need to know about morganite. Color saturation, it's clarity, things to look out for, what gives it a value, and how you should best set it to optimize the beauty of this stone. So what is morganite? It is a beautiful gemstone, commonly found in uh, South America, some countries like Mozambique and Africa. And it's a beautiful stone that ranges anywhere from like a peachy color to different kind of variations of pink. Uh, the pink is a little bit harder to find, but it has a kind of a unique kind of color palette that you're not gonna usually find in other gemstones. Well, morganite is its own gemstone and there isn't really an official grading system for it. We're gonna kind of use a framework of like the four C's that a lot of people are kind of familiarized with diamonds and try to use that um, to kind of pull it in. Um, so a part of this, you know, we always wanna explain and help you explore these beautiful gemstones. And then we're gonna also kind of give you our take on it with kind of like some buyer tips that you wanna look for when you're choosing a morganite. Let's get into color. So morganite can range in a peach blush tone as well. You can have some more bubblegum pink variety, but those are rare to find. When we want to discuss color, it's really essential to consider the saturation of color that you like for a morganite. Do you like it really peachy or do you like it more with a white palette and just hints of peach? Often with color, we like to break it down into two broad categories. So your base color and then your saturation. So base color is kind of like, what is kind of the more base color you're looking at? Is the more peach towards or more towards the pink? Um, now, the that's simple enough. Now think of saturation as kind of like how deep those colors are. One thing that is unique with morganite. So they often grow in larger crystals. Those of you guys that like a deeper saturated color, um, one of the things is it's generally linked to the larger sizes, okay? So there is a, a almost a direct correlation there that as you want to, for those that are looking for deeper saturated colors, you're going to find them in bigger sizes. So for example, let's say you have two rounds, one's a five millimeter, another's a 10 millimeter. If you're looking for like a, a deeper saturated peach, it's going to be almost near impossible or very unlikely to find it in that five millimeter whereas you're more likely to find it in the 10. It has, it's connected to the way that these stones grow and they are just easier to see this deeper saturation in the bigger, bigger sizes. Let's talk about clarity. Clarity refers to how clean or dirty a stone is. Morganite is classified as a type one gemstone, which means it's completely eye clean. The crystal grows clean. So what does that mean? throw clarity out the window. You don't need to consider it. These are all clean stones. There are other characteristics that we're considering and we're gonna keep on talking about that. So let's move on to carrot. So we've talked about this a lot in other videos. Carrot is not size. It has nothing to do with size. It's the most meaningless concept that is out there. Nothing to do with size. It has nothing to do with what your eyes can see. We'll make that clear. When it comes to morganite, it's almost completely useless. Okay, and the simple reason is there is no, uh, you, there's no like standardized way that morganite is cut. So you're gonna have multiple morganite. They're gonna be the same size, but they're gonna wildly differ in their carat weight. So when it comes to size, what we're gonna recommend, focus on measurements, just basic geometry. So then if you know there's a kind of a rough size that you like, just fix it on the measurements and that's what you wanna stick with, not the weight. Cut, so important when it comes to morganite, really does come down to the art of the cut. So one of the important things to understand with morganite is uh, there's no, there is no standardized way that these stones are cut. So you can have like, you know, multiple stones in the same shape, they're gonna be faceted completely differently. But what's really important is the color is important, but the way that it's faceted will often determine how well that color shows through. Okay, so if it's cut really well, you, you're gonna get a nice sparkle, a lot of the color shows through. On the other hand, if it's not cut well, you know, a common thing that you might see with these stones is like something that we call a windowing effect, which is where literally it almost looks completely see-through. 
You don't really see any color. In some cases, you might even be able to just see your finger underneath it, which basically you lose all the allure of what you get with a beautiful Borgonite. Let's talk about the hidden fifth C, cost, okay? So you're, you're gonna pay a premium for Morganite based on the quality of the cut as well as the size of the stone, okay? So quality of the cut is important no matter what size of stone you're gonna get. But if you do like a larger stone, you are gonna pay an incremental price increase the larger the stone because you needed to start with a larger rough. Some other things to consider when it comes to Morganite. Uh, one thing is just a lot of people will ask us, hey, how good is it? Is it resilient to chipping or cracking? And the answer is yes. So it's very good on that moss scale, 7 7.5. What does that mean? You can wear it every day. Now, um, it is softer compared to like a sapphire or a diamond. Um, you know, some ways that we might consider is it might not be the best candidate to put in a setting where it's just sticking up all high if you're worried about that. Um, there's some other kinds of ways that we could set it. But overall, I mean, we haven't really had an issue with a client coming back and saying, hey, my Morganite's been cracking. It's not a common thing that we come across. So you're gonna be considering the saturation that you like, you, you're gonna be considering the size that you like, but a really great way to narrow in the search is consider what shape you like. Morganite come in a variety of shapes. Do you like it traditionally round or do you like a fancy shape, heart, cushion? marquee, you name it, pick the shape you like, and then that will help us narrow in on the color saturation that you like and the size that you like. No matter what shape you consider, another thing to consider is the metal color that you set it in. If you set a Morganite in a white gold ring, it is going to just have a single color tone of the Morganite itself. If you consider a yellow or a rose gold ring, there's gonna be a play on colors. So what that will do, let's say you don't like a large stone, but you like a more saturated Morganite color. You could achieve that by setting it in a yellow or rose gold ring because it will enhance the color saturation of the focal stone. Now, how do we do it here at Engage? We are all about bringing your budget and your wish list together so we can figure out which stone is right for you. What we would do is we would curate different sizes, different saturations in color, more organite, side by side, all within your budget range, so you'd be able to tell which one is right for you. One thing we always wanna tell our clients with cost is especially pricing. So what makes a Morganite expensive is not necessarily going to line up with what you like, okay? And that's really important because what the market desires not necessarily is gonna be what you desire. Well, there you have it. We've gone through everything you need to know about Morganite. When you're ready, contact us, and we'd love to show them to you in person or online in our virtual studios.